All right, in our last lesson, we're gonna talk about journal entries. Now, journal entries is kind of the backbone of accounting, okay? So remember in the last lesson, we talked about increases in asset expenses and dividends, our debits, decreases our credits. Liability, owner's capital and revenue, increases our credits, decreases our debits, okay? So that's how we learned them. We talked about the T accounts. We talked about how inefficient they are because we would have to have 50 or 60 of them if we had 60 accounts. Okay, so we have something called journal entries. Now, let me give you kind of what a journal entry would look like. So I gave you an example of cash and service revenue. So cash, 3,000, service revenues, 3,000, okay. That's a journal entry. Now, a journal entry always has a debit and credit, debit, credit, Okay, so number one, always have a debit and credit. Now I like to teach my students kind of the full journal entry. Okay, so we always have a date. We'll say that's 12-1. Typically at the top of the sheet, you'd have 2000 and XX. Okay, so 12-1. Typically we have a journal entry number. So this may be journal entry number 7332. Um, a lot of accounting softwares now will number every single journal entry, so let's say you're looking up at a journal entry, you know that the journal entry is number 7774, you put that in the computer and it'll bring up the journal entry. So that's what that identifying number is. We always have a debit and credit. Debits always go first, okay? So debit is here, debits always go first, and if this was a sheet of paper, it would be on the left side. Debit means left, left side. Now. When I was in school, we used the two-finger mark. We would put two fingers over. We would indent our credits, okay? So debit, credit. There is an indent indentation. Notice here, a very defined. You know that it's indented, okay? A lot of students, and this happens all the time, they'll move this service revenue, so cash, and they'll do service revenue here, and then it'll look like two debits, and they'll go, why did I get it wrong? Well, you got it wrong because you didn't indent it, okay? So picture tells you a thousand words, well here's the picture, it should look exactly like this, okay? The amounts, same thing, they're staggered, they're indented. So we know for a fact that this is debited because it's on the left side. We know this is credited because it's on the right side. And then typically at the bottom here, we'll put a, um, a description. Now I tell my students that we put a description that is um, in layman's terms. So received cash, for service is provided. A non-accountant doesn't know what this means. A non-accountant does know what this means. Received cash for service right. Oh, okay, so it looks like I received $3,000 and I provided $3,000 of services, okay? So we try to make this as easy as possible. This summarizes what that is. Now, a couple of things about journal entries. First of all, a journal entry does not exclusively have one debit and exclusively has one credit. There will always be a debit and credit. There should always be a debit and credit, but they will never be exclusively one and one. You could have an instance where you might have one debit and two credits, five debits and five credits, two debits and one credit, okay? So you're gonna have a mixture of these. The main thing to understand is all your debits must equal all of your credits, okay? So I'm going to put it over here on this board. Let's assume that I'm going to receive cash for $7,000. I'm going to put $7,000 in my bank, okay? Increases, debit the account. Credit. Now, how did I receive that seven? Well, let's say I did some services of $4,000, okay? So I did some, provided some service. I received $4,000, but I received $7,000 in cash. So we're missing 3,000, okay? Well, let's say I sold goods of 2,000, okay? So I sold some goods while I was providing a service, so now I have $6,000. Well, where's the th other $1,000? Well, let's say that I um, received a refund, okay? I paid too much on my utility expense, so I need to reverse the utility expense. thousand dollars okay that's a complete journal entry that includes a debit and it includes a credit it has multiple credits 
but notice that debit is 7,000, and if I add these up, I still get $7,000, okay? So my debit's equal my credit. Obviously, what's missing from here is a date, transaction number, and then a description for it, but that's a journal entry, okay? So again, journal entries, they're, they're pretty easy, and, and I say that knowing that I've done it for years, but they're pretty easy once you understand the accounting expanded, expanded accounting equation, you know the debits and the credits, and then you know the kind of the layout of debits and credits, okay? And so, you know, the next day I maybe I spent another $2,000 on a piece of equipment. So I might have equipment, $2,000, and cash out, 2000 okay? Cash decreases, decreases our credits. Credits are the right side of an asset, so credit, right side. Equipment, equipment is an asset, it increased in nature, so I debited equipment for 2000 okay? So that's just an example of kind of journal entries, how to apply them. I know it was very quick. I know there were, we didn't do too many examples, but you know, go back to the last lesson. Make sure you understand this. If you understand this, you'll understand this. It might take a little bit just to get used to kind of where it needs to go. A couple other tips to understand is that these are categories, not accounts. So you're going to have multiple accounts that go within a category. You're going to have many accounts that go within a category. It's important to know how those accounts affect a category. So cash, we know is an asset. Service revenue, we know it's a revenue. Sold goods, um, that's a revenue because we know that we we're crediting increasing. Utility expense, we know that's an expense, so that belongs on this side. We know equipment is an asset, assets there, cash is there. My number one tip for those of you that are learning this for the first time is that um, it takes time to understand accounts and categories, okay? Accounts and categories. What account, uh, what account, what category does this account go to? It kind of takes time. So as you go through your accounting uh, curriculum, it um, takes some time to understand what account and how the account interacts with these categories. So that's it. That's a refresher of financial accounting.